Cause ain't nothing but hardcore hip hop and so no funk coming up off them turntables. Don't move. In just a few moments, we're going to be hanging out with dancer and artist extraordinaire, Heat Rock. This is Quick to Rock. Rockefeller. And he is Quickstep, aka DJ KS360. And we are Quick to Rock, a hip hop variety talk show that celebrates the underground artists who are keeping the legacy of hip hop and street club culture alive. This show is possible through the Creatives Rebuilds New York program in collaboration with BronxNet Television and Full Circle Soldiers. We rep the underground kings and queens who are quick to rock straight from the block, coming at you from around the way to be heard around the world. Yes, and we're going to set off episode five with the floor master artist extraordinaire, also known as Heat Rock. What up, what up, what up, what up. That was nice, yeah. Jen. <laughs> doing, some, doing some throwdowns there early yeah. in the morning. Yeah, no, I've been stretching. I okay. ate my wings this morning. Oh, I can tell you were doing weekend moves. <laughs> I was like, whoa, wait, say what? Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, it's a blessing, and we're so honored to have you here. It's a blessing here. to be here. And thank you for everything you've contributed to the scene, the community. I know sometimes we feel like no one's watching. We see you. Thank you. Quick That's and right. I see you, and we're just happy that you're still around and still sharing sharing the vibe and the energy. And so we do have some artwork here from you, so we want to start off with that, because maybe some of you don't know it. He's an artist. He's an <laughs> artist. All right, official, bona fide. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about your the residency at Sag Harbor. How did that come about? Actually, uh, first when uh, I was in Sag Harbor earlier this year, um, so you I mean was, 2022, right? Oh, uh, no, this year. Oh, so yeah, last month. First, yeah, last month, All first right. two weeks. Super as soon as, uh, nice. As soon as New Year's, like three, two, one, I was packing my bags and <laughs> I was headed out to Sag Harbor. Nice. I was doing a dance residency with uh, Layer Rhythm, and um, there's a company called The Church that's out there in Sag Harbor. Okay. And uh, they're bringing in, they're trying to bring in a lot of people of color and uh, all of their. Um, you know, and for them to present their work and their dance music. Nice. Uh, they have DJs, they have musicians, they have artists wow. and dancers that come out and they put on a performance uh, in their facility. So I was there doing a residency for two weeks and as I was there, I met the, uh, the staff of the church, which ch the church is also not just a dance venue, but it's also a gallery. So oh, I talked okay. to the owners, the director and the mm. curator and I was like, hey, you know, I'm a visual artist and trying to build myself up and move forward more and get more known. It's like, do you mind looking at my work and, um, you know, out. maybe giving me a couple of pointers? And they looked at my work and it's like, y you know, you got something. So nice. um, we want you to meet a couple of other artists in the area. So I got to meet uh, Cloud, uh, amazing artist. He was a jazz musician here Check in New out. York. And when he was around my age, he changed over to painting. He's wow. about 70 something now. Ooh. He's God an amazing painter. We want to be like you yeah. What's when we grow um, up. Cloud, uh, Cloud, I forget his last name right now, but um, I can look that up for you and nice. give that information Cloud. later. But uh, just him and his wife, his wife is an amazing painter as well. Okay. And her great grandfather is a uh, one of the grandfathers that was involved in Black Wall Street. 
Sasha. Yeah, so I got to meet them and it was amazing. So now the people from the church, they reached out to me. They said, hey, we want you to come back for the residency. So I'm headed back in March for a two week residency uh, for like an intensive with like uh, just focusing just strictly on my artwork. Man, that's great. I mean, you're being able to expand and you know, still do your dance. Clearly, we saw it, but yeah. then also have this other side of you. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. And wait, Sag Harbor is located where? For those of you who aren't New York City residents, way out in Long Island. Long <laughs> so Island, it's Strong towards, Island. Yeah, it's way it's towards the tip. I mean, you pretty much see Connecticut over the water. Wow. Yeah, it's like way out there. It's in the it's in the Hamptons. That's so, great. So yeah, it's very nice. Very, it's out in the. Um, uh, it's out in the middle, not, let me not say the middle of nowhere, but it's a lot of nature. And if those of you who don't know, Sag Harbor actually was a very, it, at one point, it was a very heavily populated settlement for African Americans. Beautiful. Yeah, so they, um, they set up a lot of their um, whaling and fishing out there. So mm. it was a very big uh, African American community at one point. That's good to know. Yeah. And also shout to the natives and the First Nations mm. who were the original yes. dwellers of that land. But that's great. That's great that you're expanding and leaving. Like you said, pack your bags. You have to leave um, the hub and the noise in the city to go somewhere and, and, and Focus. celebrate your art. Yeah. yeah. Well, you grew up in Boston? Oh, no. Actually, I grew up in Georgia. I lived in Boston for 10 years. Ah, all right. Yeah. Georgia, Boston, New York. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between the hip-hop scene in Boston and the hip-hop scene in New York? Boston has, it has its interpretation of hip-hop, which is not far from the real, inter- cool. but like this okay. interpretation of hip-hop. And you can say, I can say that about any city that I've been in. Right? Hmm. Okay, um, you know, we're here in the hub, right? And we're here in the Mecca, the birthplace, the, the yeah. birthplace of it and the way people you know, these ideas that are coming together all at once to create this big boom and, you know, that thing kind of spreads out, yes. right? So there's some information that's lost and then there's some information that's created because right. though that information that's not gained from mm. living in the Mecca, you're basically think of it as like you have a book that has all the instructions in it. And so New York has created this manual and then, then New York has gone ripped a couple of pages out and said, here, here's this book, mm-hmm. fill in the gaps, yeah, you yeah. know? And so I can say that about Georgia and I can say that about Boston. And I'm not saying one is better than the other. It all has its unique, it's got its, got its unique way of doing hip hop. Like mm. uh, when you think about like even just the graffiti, um, well, more writing, when you think about writing, DJing, um, breaking and MCing, you've got all of these different styles. I mean, even if you look at the rap culture, like just rap in general, you know you know when it's a West Coast sound right. mm-hmm. and you know when it's like a Northeastern sound and you know mm-hmm. when it's a Southern sound. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same thing with like breaking in the hip hop culture. It's there, there's still the house parties, there's still the, the graffiti is there, the breaking is there, the MCs are there, but it's kind of like their own way of doing it. That's good. You know, and it's That's still good. like, okay, this still is authentic in this way mm. to, this com- uh, to this community, right. right? So if you have a community that's mostly, um, mostly like Central Americans and Hispanic people, of course there's gonna be more of that influence, right? right? right. But if you have a community that's mostly African American, you know, you're gonna get more of that idea over there, but it's still pretty, it's still the same thing. So Boston and New York is your stomping grounds for hip hop, but mm-hmm. I know that you pop, bam, yeah. right? So how did you end up being in Boston but learning popping, and how did that influence your name, Heat Rock? So that's a real, actually I started popping when I was in Georgia, okay. but you let's just pop first, pop first. Okay. and let's just say it was very unorthodox. So a lot of the information that was easily accessible in Boston and in New York wasn't that accessible okay. in uh, Georgia. Okay. Uh, you had more access to breaking in Georgia than oh, you did with that. popping. Okay. So we didn't really have like a lot of like well seasoned OGs like to be able to say, okay, you, this is how you hit. So, you know, we were just a bunch of kids like copying what we saw, right. uh, any, anything that we could get our hands on, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, we had some older people that were kind of like, oh, do this, do this, but that foundation really wasn't there. So, I you know, Ken, again, we're filling in the gaps, right? Mm. We were calling it ticking and cranking. 
Oh. That's what we were calling it, right? Okay. Okay. And so, you know, we would see all the waves and everything and like turbo and ozone yeah. and anything out of Beach Street, the anything video, that we saw on Wild Side right? and music mm -hmm. videos, yeah. right? So we were like, oh, they're doing that thing again. So then we would just copy that and, you know, we would come up with our own tricks and things like that. And so I got my name actually for, from a video game. I was a heavy gamer, me and my brother, we oh. competed. Uh, with video games. Mm. So things like Mortal Kombat, Virtual Fighter, oh things like that. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, we competed on a regular level and there was a game called Buster Groove and then one of the characters in there that was like a, a he he was breaking and popping. Oh, wow. His name was Heat. And so that I that. was that was like that my was favorite. Who you played. Yeah, I played the <laughs> most. So I was like I need a name, so I took the name. So later nice. on, moving to Boston, um, if anybody remembers breakdance.com, shout outs to Chino and Wack from Breaks Crew from helping put those tapes together for that. Um, breakdance.com, I moved to Boston and I jumped on there and I was like, hey, you know, going to college and uh, I'm looking for a community of people to dance with. And I emailed maybe 600 people. Uh, Two people got back to me. Oh, wow. One person was like, there's a practice over here, way too far for me at the time. And another person was like, Hennigan Elementary School. Mm. Right, which I'm sure you guys remember this place down in uh, in Heath's over Heath Street Projects over in uh, Boston. Yeah. So I go there, and that's when I met the Floor Lords. Okay. okay. So that's when I met Domino, Dash, yes, and uh, Lino, and Tron, and yeah. Shallow. Oh my and god. And so those guys were helping me out with like popping. Those are so legendary yeah. OGs. Oh, excuse, from right. Boston. What? Yes. Oh my so god. Boston. They, and rest Boston. in peace. Rest in peace, <laughs> peace to Domino. Yeah. Yes. Domino, amazing. Wow. So they were kind of helping me out and giving me that foundation. Um, I started trying to break when I was 16, still living in Georgia. Like I would be in my garage okay. and I would just lay it out and then try to like dance and then, you know, school, try to dance with all the other kids at school. And then the same thing, uh, you know, there were talent shows would come around and, you know, some of the kids were practicing in other places. I wasn't that good. My, my concept of breaking then was power. Okay. Like, because that's the cool stuff, right? Well, that's like, the flashy. Everybody right, gets that drawn the, to the that spins. That was the flashiness. The, yeah. yeah, so I got drawn to that. Uh, even though I had seen it in movies when I was a kid, because my dad was from Boston. So movies like Wild Style, Beach Street, mm -hmm. and Star Wars, yes. that was in his regular rotation. He was like a movie head. Okay. So I grew up watching these movies, so I knew all of this stuff. And nice, I was like, nice. and so that was one of the things that drew me to dance is because I saw people of color dancing. Right, right. And that's all the people I always saw, you know, and then I was like, wow, that's cool because those they look like me. Right. And that right. that I want to do that. That's right. right. So I was always trying to learn how to do all any type of social dance, you know, Salt and Pepper would do their little routine. Big Daddy Kane had his backup dances. Anything I saw I was trying to do. Michael, one of the biggest things. So that's how I got into that. And then moving to Boston. And then I stopped breaking and I was just popping. And then the name Rock came along because El Nino and Lean Rock, when they were kids, we were just in the car and they were just saying people's names and just putting the name Rock after it. Yeah, but imagine this thing. for about two hours straight oh, though. No. <laughs> so, okay. cause they're just kids and you know, Lino's just like, oh my God. And they were driving to go do this show. And so I get out of the car and they kept saying Heat Rock over and over. And I was like, that kind of sounds dope. And so I put rock on the end of the name. And then I was also writing at the same time. So the one was, I put that on the end of it so people knew that I was. The only cause one. When you're, yeah, because when you're writing, you have to put your area code or you have to put a number a street after number. a street yeah. number. So people, so if somebody else is writing Rockefeller, right. you have to write Rockefeller one. Right. So everybody knows you're the that's first right. one. Right. And then that's Rockefeller two or Rockefeller 770 or Rockefeller right. 30, 138, whatever yeah. street they're on. So everybody, oh, that's that rocker. In case you this didn't know why one. the numbers are there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to know so people could differentiate you from the, the other, other one. So well, there, and there you have yeah. it. Heat Rock one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, um, please let the viewers know how they can support, follow. Uh, is it a website that you have or is there uh, IG or Facebook? Something where they can, oh, let me go check out Heat Rock. One, yeah. not two. Because <laughs> there is another one. Yeah, but there, this is the real first. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a website. It's uh, my name, Ivan Cofield, I-V-A-N-C-O-F-I-E-L-D.com. 
Uh, my Instagram is Ivan Colfield, I V A N C O F I E L D. And my dance Instagram is Heat Rock One, H E A T R O C K O N E. Ooh, yeah. Lordy, Lordy. Well, we're going to um, stay in touch with you. We're going to keep supporting. Um, you're in, you're a New Yorker at this point. I don't, I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, no, he's not from, he's put in his time, you earned your stripes, and, you know, when I think of anybody who's carrying both popping and breaking, and the artwork, come on, you yeah. official, official tissue, Thank official you. tissue, yep. don't go nowhere, we're coming back with a little bit of more, quick to rock. What? Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you didn't even turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, backpack kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I gotta get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Let's go. Oh, honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, OK? Drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Can you see anything different as a pill? No, no. You don't know? Fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. There's only one thing that will save somebody's life that is naloxone nasal spray. Fentanyl is cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? Really just all about the money. I just didn't realize that one pill could change your whole life. More kitchen now. Even though we didn't grow up together, he's my favorite brother. Hey, sis. I'm the baby of the family, and he's the gentle giant. What you know about poor George? Man, please, that's a classic. You know when they say people are a rare breed? Yeah, he's that. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a few hours. Don't worry, Sherry, you know I'm for you. I know. Go get the football. Yeah. That was my favorite memory. He was always for you. This is a true story of me, Bridget Floyd, and this guy, George Perry Floyd Jr., my big brother. Most hiring algorithms would scream me out. 
Some bosses couldn't see me as a leader. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. I've been running code as long as I've been able to reach a keyboard. This is what I do. It's second nature for me, coordinating 100 details at once. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. I sold them on my skills. You gotta be so good they can't ignore you. My magic is... Analytics and empathy. That's how I gain clients. You have to have the confidence in yourself to show up and defy the odds. I am more than who I am on paper. I never got a college degree. And today, I'm the CEO of my own company. People want to tell me I'm one in a million when actually I'm one of millions. The stars are all around us. It's time for them to shine. And two flashlights. So chill. Why is it cool? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back to Quick to Rock. This is the Behind the Grooves section, where we go a bit deeper into the music uh, and the flow with Quick Steps. So, yeah. Well, what you got brewing check it out. in your this, kitchen? This, this time we're going to get behind Melting Pot and what's behind oh, that groove funny. and how it's been influencing, actually, hip-hop and house. Okay. And it was a genre called Hip House. I remember that. So, in the beginning, I played a track uh, that was, you know, had Melting Pot in it. And it sounded something like this, you just heard it, right? Now check it out. The beginning of this track actually sounds like this. Uh, Straight house. Sounds like hard house. I remember that song. Right? Too black, too strong. <laughs> check this out. So I remember that. Now, <laughs> another person who used it was Big Daddy Kane. And he used it just straight, right? So it was like this. Here comes the conqueror brother that varies and never ceases. Violators pick up the pieces uh. that are left behind as you left the fun. The fury of the five fingers of death are mine. Flipping on a microphone beside the pole. Giving competition a Big Daddy syndrome. Yeah, I had the Big Daddy right? syndrome. I was all up on the <laughs> lyrics, the music, his swag. The original? Oh, forget it. Oh my God, line it up. Shout out to the rockers. <laughs> line it up. Pick somebody. Nah, shuffle first, what? What, me and you, what, what, what? This is the joint right here. But I do remember hearing that in clubs, house clubs. People used to do like the dolphin I gotta stop myself, because I'll end up playing the whole thing. So, Melting Pot. It's very influential in hip hop and house. Yeah. So now, Bucketheads had an album that's an album that came out through um, Kenny Dope. Nice. And it had a lot of dope tracks on it. One of them was called Get Myself Together, right? Or Got Myself Together. Oh, okay. I Got Myself Together is layered. One of the layers in there is Melting Pot. So I'm just going to play it so you can hear what it sounds like. Listen close. Guitar. You can hear it. Yeah. It's sneaky. It's like the guitar, you know? Now, I'm going to show you the layers to this. One of the layers is from a sample called Soul on Your Side. Check this out. Soul on Your Side. Yes. Okay. You always got these like <laughs> obsolete. Gotta go find it. Oh, I think I've heard this song. Mad smooth. I think I've heard this. Song. Ooh, the flute was. He was born on the fourth floor. Over tenements 
Number. I gotta That's, stop because I play the whole thing. I gotta play the whole thing. That's a lucky number right there. Right? The other layer is called Moving by okay. Brass Construction. Check it out. I feel like I've heard them before. You definitely heard this before. I think. Yes, I've heard it. Yes. I'm gonna let this rock. It's good to appreciate the music as it builds. Yes, I hear, I hear I got myself together, yeah. Ah. Woohoo. Right? That one's good. So all of those things put together, you can definitely hear it in this song right here. I got myself together. Listen close again, y'all. Check it out. So disco had a heavy influence with inside hip hop. People don't really know that. Hip hop was really a mix of disco, funk, rhythm and blues, jazz. And we weren't the only ones sampling. I'm, I'm gonna do one more joint called Disco Nights, right? Disco Nights is a song, this very famous uh, disco song. And it has, they also sampled um, Soul On Your Side. Check out the beginning. Um. More time. Why does it sound like something else right now? I don't know why. They're all kind of. There we go. There we go. I play that whole thing too. Yeah. So all of those things is what influence is the influence of what you hear in hip hop and house together. So when hip hop house uh, was out, you know, you heard tracks like "Got Myself Together" by Kenny Dope, who's also a hip hop head, got together with Louis Vega, and you have all of these genres mixed in. So when you go to the club, you hear all of these things as you get behind the groove. So yeah. that's the segment for today. It's man. good. Hope y'all enjoyed it. It's good. I mean, I remember hip house in the clubs, but like it was mostly house, but occasionally they would like sprinkle some of these, you know, songs right. that had lyrics and the samples. Yeah, you just took us down the rabbit hole. Ty Telly, <laughs> he's another one you who know? used hip hop yep. samples in the house. So, so this has been the Behind the Groove section. If you enjoyed this segment, follow Quick Step on SoundCloud and Instagram at DJKS360 to tune in to more mixes like this. You know what I'm saying? And we just released the track Right, right, on your band camp. So is it DJ KS360? Yeah, so you go to my band camp, it's under DJ KS360. Like Rock said, on my IG, you can follow me there, my SoundCloud. And uh, this Behind the Groove is not just a section for getting behind the music here. We also have a party, and there's one coming up February 23rd, Behind the Groove. Hope to see y'all there. Yeah, at the New York and Poets Cafe. What? Wait, is it over? No, the party is not <laughs> over. But the show is, and we want to thank our guest, He Rock, for bringing his styles upon styles, because he was a popper, he was a breaker, right? He's also yeah. an artist. Bringing that Boston history, uh, the his, Georgia history. You know. Wrapping up all the way to New York. Yes, so a he's historian. He's a New York native right now. Yup, he's a teacher. And we also want to thank CRNY and Bronxnet for helping us get this project in motion. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram so you can know who's coming through for the next episode. In the meantime, stay funky and connected to the underground. Keep doing your thing. Quick, no fuimos. That's Let's right. go. This is quick to rock. Peace. Let's go with some of those beats. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.